Hello, so welcome to the Knowing and Growing show. And today I'm talking to Michelle Murphy, who's been developing a course in miracles and her approach to it and helping people to use it in their lives. And as a way of, of demonstrating what a course in miracles is, I came up with a, a little article which expresses one of the things I'm frustrated with and dealing with at the moment. And Michelle is going to go through that and present A Course in Miracles perspective on it, which I think will, will hopefully help me. And it will also give all of you listening um, a feel for what A Course in Miracles is all about and what it can do for us. So, hello Michelle. Hi Keith, hi, good morning. <laughs> so, uh, perhaps you'd like to, to share um, or, or read begin reading the, the piece I sent you, which was called For and Against. For or Against, yes, I looked at this yesterday and uh, um, and we'll have a look at it together. So I'm just going to read out and see what comes through spirit. Yes. So we have in For or Against, in the personal development arena, victim thinking is a major issue. So many of us can't help feeling that the whole world is against us. And of course, if that's what's in our heads, so the universal law of attraction applies and we bring that very situation uh, to us. All classic justifications for positive thinking. But, it, but is it as simple as that? Can we just switch our thoughts to more constructive ones? Hmm. So what came up for me as I was reading that... <clears throat> Well, the words personal development mm -hmm. and the words uh, positive thinking okay. and of course is what uh, what we think we are um, what we believe we are and how we feel is is what we attract I remember reading something once is how you feel what you think you become what you feel you attract and what you imagine you create mm -hmm. yep. so that's beautiful, what you think you become, what you feel you attract, and what you imagine you create. So for me, uh, thinking is so important because it is what I become, you know, and how I, how I am in the world. Um, and this um, positive thinking is, is great as a start to have these positive affirmations of, you know, I'm positive, powerful, <laughs> helpful, friendly, loved. In these words, I'm loved, I'm loving, I'm lovable. Um, a wonderful affirmations. But they really have to be, for me, in my experience, they have to be felt and experienced and understood. Yep, okay. Um, so that's what was coming up with that. And so can we just switch our thoughts to more constructive ones? Well, yes, we can. We can with help and all these self-help books, but we have to remember that in its essence, that it's the personal self that is the problem. Mm -hmm. That's what was coming up for me with that. So the, the, the course uh, is, is the wonderful uh, teaching in this. You know, it's a deep psycho-spiritual um, look at, at our human condition, um, which, and it's the whole premise of the course is undoing the ego self, the self that thinks it's separate, the self that feels alone, the self that feels fearful, the self that feels like a victim or a victimizer or a rescuer, you know, it's a, so it's a very good um, teaching in understanding our, our humanness and our spiritual inheritance which is quite the opposite of feeling fearful quite the opposite of feeling separate quite the opposite of feeling like a victim okay yeah yeah well i'm all i'm, I'm happy with, with all that that general uh, idea and the principle of it so yeah i'd like to read on yes so anyone who seriously tried this will probably tell you that while such an approach can work to some extent, often with amazing results. It's often far from easy. The 
The thoughts and beliefs we're intent on updating are often so deeply ingrained that we might as well try to change our place of birth. The two factors often having a major impact on each other. Sorry, and I wasn't exactly sure what you meant by that bracketed bit. The two okay. factors often having so, a major uh, impact. So what I mean oh, yeah. is that the, the time and the place and the circumstances of our birth and our early life has such an impact on how we think that yeah. we, we cannot separate them. Yes, and it's perfect because exactly what, what was coming for me when I read this um, and uh, contemplated it yesterday was um, this, yes, a place of birth. So the course actually makes it quite clear that this world is not our home. It's not our home. So, um, and it, it, it states that this world is not your home. It's, it, is, um, it is made from the belief in separation the belief in actually, um, it's quite strong, it has very strong um, statements like this world is attack, is an attack upon God. So, and um, I've heard other people put it in different ways, such as, you know, we were so frightened when we left our source, seemingly left our source, you know, that we fled into form, we fled into this person, Michelle, in this uh, form, world of form. So belief beneath the course is, is um, doesn't mince, you know, with its words. There's any non-dual teaching when you come down to it. And it says that, yes, this world isn't our home. And um, we're very afraid here, actually. Mm. And it's no, and we... We kind of pacify ourselves with a little bit of happiness, you know, and a uh, little bit of just and a lot of distraction here. Um, but it's only when we come back to our true self, our home in God, our home in love, our home in uh, our beingness, that we, that our thoughts and beliefs then are changed. You know? um, right, okay, so if, if I understand that, and uh, what you're saying, it certainly resonates and feels good from within, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the world is not our home. I mean, that, that's a very powerful statement, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, I, I say it certainly resonates, and, and the fact that so much about life and the way humans currently live and choose all the systems and beliefs and so on around, they're all so um, against what it could be, but it's not surprising that as we become more aware, as we begin this, this path of becoming more connected, so we become aware of how separate the conventional way of living is. So in a way, it's a bit of a vicious circle in, in that you know, as we become more aware, it, we have to see and face how big that gulf is. Yes, 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 it is. It's, 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 um... You know, the ego, I've been I've heard, has been ex, ex, described as a, um, a socially induced um, hallucination as well by Deepak Chopra, yeah. which I thought was interesting. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so we're all in this together. You know, we all have a belief. If we're here, and we seemingly are here, you know, I can't deny that I'm sat in this room and next to this table, chatting to you, um, looking out, you know, at this window, this place. Um, and everybody is in the same boat, and that's that's the sort of beauty of it, really. And then it's when we come together and start discussing these things and, and being honest about how we feel, and like you say, sort of really looking at this gulf, or why am I not feeling? Why, you know, why don't I feel connected or um, at peace, you know? So I, I think that was one of the points I was getting at, was it, it's not necessarily that we feel the world's against us. It's because you know, as we become aware of this gulf, that helps us to, 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 to recognise just, just how big that separation is and how big the task is. Um, Mm. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And, oh, that's sorry. That was the, the other point I was was mm. meaning to get on to. Was 
when, when you and I are talking, I'm talking to other people in what I call the transcendence movement in, in my PhD thesis, then, then yes, we, we, I can see, we can see and feel the potential and work with it. But when you're with those surrounded in normal day-to-day -day life, you know, when, when you're just in where you're living, where you're shopping, where you're working, getting on a bus, getting on a train, and you're surrounded by all this disconnected energy, and you feel that separation, then uh, is it not surprising that we get a, a bit depressed? Yes, yes, because that, that disconnected energy is is in us. Yeah. It's in us. So, so you know, um, teacher David Hofmeister, one of the Course Miracles teachers who I've followed quite a lot, um, said to Jesus once, you know, I can't live here in this society. I can't cope. You know, and, and his answer from Jesus was, um, the society is in you. The society is in you. You know, so everything, so it's it's it's, it's deep, it's radical, but it's, it's no more radical than any non-dual teaching, you know. That's because if it's non-dual, that means it's, there is only one mind, but we're all connected. And when I do the healing, on me, it affects. It's it's I do it for everybody. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I like that. And I, one of the things I'll often say is how you know, the inner reflects the outer. And but it, is it my feeling and my experience is that sometimes there is there is just so much outer that it's difficult to see exactly what that is reflecting within me. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, exactly. That's where our discernment comes in, isn't it? And, um, you know, my journey has been the same. You know, what, what should I listen to? What is this reflecting? Is this, is this all me? Um, and, you know, it sounds depressing and overwhelming if you think it's all me. But, but we have to remember that it's, it's all the false me. It's the false okay. me yes. that is being reflected back. You know, my false beliefs that I'm unworthy of love. My false belief that I am weak and um, disconnected. You know, it's my false belief that um, I'm not good enough. You know, because this is what the ego is. This is what this personal... Um, belief is a belief in separation, in weakness, in victimhood, in comparison. Always comparing, always comparing. But love doesn't compare, you know, and love doesn't see good or evil because love has no opposite. So, mm, so their love only will respond to anything with love. So for me, well, where I am at now, you know, and I've had um, difficult relationships with families and a seemingly, you know, um, dis oh, well, difficult um, childhood. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that anymore. Everything's <laughs> been perfect, you know, as I can see. But these trials and certain people who are sent to us are our greatest teachers. Because they really are reflecting back to us what we're feeling, what we're really feeling about ourselves when we really look. You know, so when I, if I think somebody is cold towards me or doesn't understand me, well, where am I not understanding myself? Where am I cold to myself? And when I realize my true self, I'm completely understood and cared for because I'm realizing my true self, which is made from love. <laughs> it could never be, it could never be neglected. Mm. So that is, that is the journey, I feel. Um, and it comes in many, and there's a personal curriculum for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's having that faith, actually, that everything is working for you. And it doesn't always feel like that, of uh, course. No. 
it doesn't always feel like that. I happen to be in a very good place where I am feeling it, you know, and I feel, because I'm feeling it, I'm wanting to share it. Very good. You know? Yeah. Thanks, Keith. Shall I carry on? Yeah, please carry on. So, can we just switch our thoughts to more constructive ones? Yes, I think we've, we've covered that. Yeah. We have to, we have to. We have to, we? We, we, that has to be our intent, yes. Yes, anyone who seriously tried this will probably tell you that while such an approach can work to some extent, often with amazing results, it's often far from easy. The thoughts and beliefs we're intent on updating are often so deeply ingrained that we might as well try to change our place of birth. We've gone over that. So, yes, so we can come back to we are spiritual. Our place of birth is our spiritual home, which is within us, which is the the, the being and the um, safety, the safety of knowing who we are. Because when you're home, you feel safe. This is why we love our homes. And you know. So from my own experiences, I've identified a number of other issues that are relevant here. Awareness, as I become more aware, so I become more aware of the many ways in which those around me in normal everyday life, if not against me, are probably not for me. Yes. Yes, everything becomes heightened on the spiritual journey. Very heightened. Because we are looking at higher thoughts. We are aiming for the highest perspective. So everything does have to be flushed up. <laughs> I was talking with a friend this morning and she said she had a lovely um, opening yesterday morning and saw the oneness and felt the freedom and how could I ever be, you know, um, unhappy. And I had the same person on the phone with me this morning in tears, mm -hmm. in absolute tears, wanting actually to kill herself. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Right. You know, so that's, that is the, the dark and the light, isn't it? You know, until we see that... So we bring all our illusions to truth. So uh, that was the other thing that I, I, something you said earlier that I wanted to, to bring up was this, the dark. What do we mean by the dark? Because in um, popular culture, the, the dark side is Darth Vader and, it, and it's the you know, fight, fighting the evil out there. And I always get frustrated that it's, it's all about what's out there rather than what's within us. But it, it's it, in that sense, the dark is usually portrayed as someone trying to take control it's that sort of dark whereas what we're often the sort of darkness we're talking about is more of a a, a depression it's more of um that you know nothing's right nothing's working what's the point sort of darkness rather than a you know i want to rule the world sort of darkness you want to comment on that yeah it's from the course um of my own experience <sighs> The dark is, is within us, isn't it? It is, again, this belief in separation. It's the belief that I'm separate in a body with seven billion separate beings here, good and bad. And um, I have to heal this within my own mind. So all is mind. So all is mind. I am not a body. I am free. I am still as God created me, is what the Course says. So I'm not a body. You know, it doesn't mean to say I have to hate my body or, or trying to reject it or kill it, because it's actually all, all within the love. So, you know, I don't have to um, repel anything. But I am free and I'm still as God created me, and God created me safe, whole and healed, is what the Course says, and uh, free to forgive and free to save the world. So when the teachings say I'm free to forgive, it means that I'm already forgiven. I, God has never condemned me. I've never been condemned. So therefore, I'm not guilty. Because along with this sense of self comes a huge, as the Course says itself, you know, you think you have many problems, but you don't think that guilt is your problem. So it's this existential guilt of 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 um of the finite mind of the thinking mind you know um but i think this is an important point one which perhaps i haven't seen in quite that light because whenever i see or talk about forgiveness 
I normally, okay, it might sometimes apply to myself, forgiving myself for, for getting angry at something or forgiving myself or whatever, but I tend usually to apply it to the things that are winding me up. So you know, I forgive you know, the kids outside for making a lot of noise or you know, for, 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 forgive the IT people for you know, developing a system that I find totally Ill illogical and you know, intu non-intuitive. Mm. How would you respond to that? Yes. Yes, so forgiveness, so the the noisy kids or whatever. Yes, it's a triggering something. You know, you were wanting something to be different, that way. Yes. I want my peace and quiet. You know, That's the right. kids are making noise. I have two teenagers, so they're actually quite quiet, actually. They quite often say, I make too much noise. <laughs> oh, I like that. Very good. <laughs> <It's great. laughs> I want them to talk to me more. Um, yeah, but there you go. That's just it. It's, I want something to be different. You know, and you want something to be different when the kids are making a noise, when the... When the um, when the computer system wasn't to your liking or whatever it is. Yeah, so we're we're constantly um wanting something to be different from what it is. So and that's what the course says, that's what we've actually done. So we already have everything. We had everything. We we have everything because everything is now. So the whole the whole um, sort of time and space, all that comes into the course as well. It's very clear that time is an illusion, you know. Yeah. It's got wonderful lines about time. Um, I can't think of any now. But yeah, um, so so time in this in this illusion of space, time, matter, you know, uh, we're lacking. We have such a sense of lack and there's such a sense that we're wrong actually as well. So funnily enough, we're always seeing lack and wrongness in others. You know, what's lacking in the computer system, what's lacking, you know, what's so those children are making a noise, that's that's wrong, I should have my peace, you know, and it's so so you can see where where this this whole ego thought system, which the course is very clear about, that it is a thought system based on fear, based on the belief in sin, that actually says that sin there is no sin. Sin is, is, is another word for lack of love. A lack of love. And then the guilt, of course, when you think you've done something wrong, you feel guilty. And guess what? You're going to expect to be punished. Oh, so we usually oh punish ourselves very well because yes. we think we're a body. And the course actually says, and if you think you're a body, you will be depressed. <laughs> So we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing here. We think we're bodies and we're depressed, you know, and we're, we're fed up, we're angry, we're annoyed most, a lot of the time. And the whole outside world is a great um, reflection of all this annoyance and grievances that we have. So, yeah, it's good to... But it offers something else. And the thought system of the Holy Spirit... Or oneness, or you could call it the Buddha mind, um, the divine mind, whatever, beloved, whatever you want to call it, the universe, um, the Tao, is the complete opposite of that. It comes from a place of innocence, that everything is innocent, and everyone is innocent. So, so why on earth would you feel that every, anything is wrong, actually? You know, you get back your peace, you get back your joy, your happiness, you, your huge sense of acceptance comes with that and allowing. doesn't mean to say you can't tell the kids to shut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all okay, you know, we're not expected to be perfect. That's what I love about it. Um, because, yeah, because we come from perfection. Yes, and God sees us as per perfect. You know, so then we can be free here to 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 just be ourselves. We're not worried so much about what other people are thinking about us. Because as a lovely quote said, when you're not you're not worried about what other people think about you because you're not worried about what you think of you. Because you're happy with yourself. And all you want to do is with that is share it and be compassionate towards others. Because you you've learned how to be compassionate with yourself. 
Many, many useful, good points there, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. So, so you become aware, if not against. Yes. So our last thing was, you know, people are not. If not, they're, if they're not against me. They're probably not for me. So I think we've covered how to be more for me. Yeah. That's back to love, isn't it? Yeah. There's two facets of this. Firstly, as my own level of awareness increases, so I become more conscious of the reality of those I share a street, town, country, or world with. I see that most are so caught up in their own rushed lives that they don't even notice me less about care about me. This is in stark contrast to the village and community in which I was brought up where folks generally did care and look out for each other. Mm. Maybe it's just a sign of how things have changed in the 50 years between the 60s and the 2010s. Some, some when, probably the Thatcher era of the 1990s, followed by the current head in screen tech age, head in screen tech age, has made British society at least, and probably many others, far more self-centred, with the norm being to cut yourself off from everything and everybody else. Mm. No so, wonder so many of us have victim thinking. It's not that the world is against us, more than the societal norm has so favoured personal success in a limited material sense, mm. that there is little sense in many quarters of belonging, of being cared for or cared about. In my own case, there's another factor which exists. Okay, so before you go on to that, so let, yeah, let's <laughs> look at that one. And in, in fact, I was chatting to a, a friend yesterday, and, and we saw the the paradox in this that it, over the last, say, 30, 40 years, 70s, 80s, in particular, that was the real uh, emphasis on we can all succeed, we can all be ourselves, and. Uh, uh, and that was, I suppose, yeah, allow, and allowed and enabled and encouraged the ego to, you know, be, become the, the thing that mattered, and all a lot of the, the marketing hype and the politics and so on was came around it. But what's happened is that that has created a society where that's the norm, and and therefore we're actually less happy in ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, so sorry, so what's the norm again? So, so... The, 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 the current norm is, well, the, the me, me, me thinking. You know, the, yeah, uh, everything I want, I can have. Yes, yes. And it doesn't make us happy. No. But, but society is geared around with that belief. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And the ego is a complete belief in lack. So it's never full, never fulfilled, never satisfied. And um, the Course says that it literally goes from suspicious to vicious. That's its only mode, is from suspicious to vicious. So it's never trusting. You know, it has big problems trusting. And very easily, if it doesn't get its way or something shocks it or something out of the blue happens, it gets vicious. Mm -hmm. You know, look what you've done, you know. Now look what's happened, you know. It doesn't like, it wants things to stay as uh, calmly without change. It doesn't like change. That's true. It doesn't like change. But what we truly are is changeless. That's the paradox, isn't it? What we are is changeless and eternal and um, unlimited. Yeah, so it's, it's um, yeah, as you say, everything reflects this. The head in, the head in screen tech age, the, the isolating, you know, it's all um, reflective. Oh gosh, somebody's coming to, to, one second. So a good metaphor for us, the window cleaner. Oh, right. Literally <laughs> I like that. About cleaning our windows. I read something about in the course yesterday, actually, about keeping our, our windows clean and our minds pure. Um, yeah, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? We're, uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're lifting up the dirt. You know, when we start doing this, uh, somebody was talking about the spiritual journey being like cleaning a very dirty oven, actually. Yes. <laughs> when you start scrubbing it, it makes a lot of dirty water. It certainly does. <laughs> before, before it's um, clean before it's clean, before it's healed. 
So our work is as healers here to heal this, uh, yeah, the suffering, really, and the sense of uh, aloneness that we feel and our ways and the ways in which we pacify this all the time, you know, with our little, with our hiding away. So that, that coming, linking that idea, this clearing away and the hiding away with another understanding of what we mean by the dark side or the dark stuff. I would often associate that with the stuff in our heads, the, the stuff that's in our subconscious, the, the chips on the shoulders, the beliefs that we inherited in our upbringing and all that sort of stuff. So the clearing away then, the clearing the windows really is when we you know, face, well, that was what I was brought up to believe and now we have to say, well, actually, that's a load of rubbish. A you know, load of rubbish. Yeah. That's a load of rubbish, exactly. And my past has been perfect for me and any thoughts I've had of um, unworthiness and, and being unappreciated and important. Yes, I've got all of those. And um, it is a load of rubbish. It's a load of rubbish because it's, um, it's, it's a belief in the false self. It's a belief in the false self and the false, the false self wants to do it, perpetuate that. Constantly, you know, and keep me in chains. We're slaves here. We're slaves here, yes. But we're not. We once you see the <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Once you're onto it, once you're onto it, it's inevitable. You know, the truth is inevitable. The course has lovely lines about this, you know, all things work for good and um lovely ones like, you know, um perfect patience um produces immediate results you know beautiful lines like that then um, that's i quite got that right but it is that's the not to say perfect patience or oh, it's total patience or something that produces immediate results and yeah i think that when we start looking within when we start looking within uh that's that's our way out but we do it we have to do it with help because it can be a bit scary. What did I hear somebody say yesterday? Our mind is a bit like a scary neighbourhood, you know? A bad neighbourhood. You don't want to go there alone. Quiet, yeah. Mm. But the light is, is under the... We bring the, the illusions to the truth. So we don't try and bring God into the illusion. You know, the, the Course says that... You know, God doesn't even know about this, you know, true love. I could, well, love, love doesn't know, there's no opposites, but we have the wisdom, the intuition, the Holy Spirit, you could call the course, call it the Holy Spirit. Other people might call your higher self, your intuition, your wise self, um, your pure consciousness, you know, that, 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 that we are, that aspect of us um, does know and knows our, uh, intimately our um knows us okay. knows us knows our beliefs knows our problems knows our thoughts and feelings and is willing to work with us when we start feeling that we deserve to be hurt that that, that we deserve to um own that yeah because we have a great such a belief in that we don't deserve that we because the, 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 this, this is still a small voice isn't it and the ego always speaks loud and speaks first. It certainly does. <laughs> yeah. So shall I carry on? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, oh, this bit, yeah. Um, since as long as I can remember, I've been an observer. I like to see what's going on. Exactly what we're talking about, really. This is the observer self that observes what's going on. I notice, I suppose, it is this that has made me a good quality assurance person and a good researcher. I can spot trends or things that are out of place. I'm not swayed by superficial factors, but able to tune in and get a real feel for a situation. And that's perfect because my journey over the last 10 years from having a breakdown 10 years ago, you know, and, and um, obviously it was a spiritual breakdown, <laughs> breakthrough, 
and it has been one of asking questions ever since. And when we start observing what's going on and saying, gosh, you know, my question was, where does all the love go? Or, you know, I wanted to see through the eyes of love. What is going on here? Why does nobody seem to care? You know, and I kept asking questions and you will be answered. I have been answered. You know, so we have to be, we have to be in this observer. We have to see what's going on. We have to start noticing what's going on within ourselves. You know, and then we have to start spotting trends, exactly. We start getting to know ourselves, you know, then I get to know where I can easily be, go, you know, easily come back to those ego thoughts, which, which are very strong, you know. <laughs> you know, apparently the Buddha was even still tempted by Mara after his awakening and, okay. you know, had to, as, as, yeah, so, so the journey of awakening is firstly realizing that, sh that you are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, you're not the thinker. So what are you? Your awareness itself. So your awareness, which is, uh, you could call it pure consciousness. And then you learn about the nature of what that is. Well, you, you, for me, it's like I had a pretty good idea that it was all about love and compassion, complete um, a love which is beyond tenderness, actually. And it's, it's so intimate. So that is the, the, the nature of, um, you know, how loved we are. And the course is wonderful for that as well. This is like an epic poem, actually. You know, it's, it's always telling us, it actually says, you know, God is incomplete without us. And of course, God isn't incomplete without us. The universe isn't incomplete without us. But, it, but as somebody said, it's like an appeal to our hearts, you know. It's an appeal to really make us see how loved we are. You know, that God is incomplete without me. Wow, if you contemplate that. So beautiful. I see what you mean, yes. How could we ever feel lacking, you know, or ever see lack in others? Yeah, so that's beautiful. So then I can spot trends or things that are out of place. I'm not swayed by superficial factors, but able to tune in and get a real feel for a situation. Yeah. And it's our feelings. I say we're not our feelings, but our feelings are so important. That's the paradox, isn't it? We have it to look at our feelings yes. before we can transcend the feelings of doubt. Yeah. You know, and then what's left is um, doubtlessness. <laughs> yeah, and then we move. We move from a different place. And, of course, what happens when you move from this different place, in my experience, you, the reflections come back to you in... A thousandfold, you know, you see because you're feeling more whole, more safe, more complete, more loved. You are, you are reflected that back. I was like driving to Llandidna the other day, and I felt very close to God and very happy at the time. And at the mo at that exact moment, I literally looked across, and there was a van, and it said um, Eden uh, revisited. It was Eden revisited, or something like Eden re. And it was just such a beautiful sign for me. But, you know, we have never left Eden, the Garden of Eden. We just believe we have. Mm. You know, life can be, uh, this can be a happy dream. That's what the Course says. Yeah. You know, the dream figure is Michelle, her story. You know, a story of woe and struggle and disappointment. <laughs> But you as you know, say, it, it's all back about, back um, back yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and victimhood, exactly where we started, you know, and when am I ever going to get the right partner, the right, you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, but yeah. it's like, well, if I'm looking outside, mm -mm, I ain't going to find it outside. I have to feel it within. And the rest will follow. The rest will follow. So, so, you know, as I've got lovely quotes upstairs, actually, all the wonders you seek are within you. 
And that's all, uh, yes, why we talk about, or I, I talk about going beyond the beliefs and beyond thought is my, my current one, as you say, to engage in this, this pure consciousness and be part of it and, and rise above the thoughts. Yeah. Rise above the... The thoughts. Yes. Yes, it's the thoughts. You know, I had a quote recently and I, I was wondering what, what, it, what was it about. It said, thought is born of failure. Ooh. And I thought that's worth contemplating. It is, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Because it is. It's a belief in limits. You know, it's... Um, I've been listening to a lot of Rupert Spear as well recently. I, you know, I love many spiritual teachers and the course is sort of my go-to um, scripture, if you like. And I don't know if that's the right word. But, um, yeah, he talks about this. You know, the limits, it's, 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 it's the, the belief in the self is like limitlessness, limited. Yeah. You know, so thought is, is, uh, or, or, or is awareness, pure consciousness, limited. You see, there's like a, there's like, it's, 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 but it's almost like we've had to become limited to, to, to see our limitlessness. Yes. It's often a way, yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So is yeah. that all I said? Should I carry on? So, let's get a real feel for the situation. Thus, as I look around me and tune into today's reality, I can't help but note, for example, how little most people seem to have for them. Um, a little, little time. time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's funny. I should say, you know, we're, we're talking about how little we That's feel right. that we have, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. You know, and how we're not little at all. We have everything. So, how little time most people seem to have for themselves for themselves or what they feel they need to do, let alone for anybody else who happens to be sharing life with them. It's nobody's fault, just what society has uh, have, has become. In many areas over recent decades, again, it is no surprise that victim thinking and all the health and societal issues that go with it are at such high levels. Mm. Yeah, and the course is brilliant on this because it says that sickness is a defence against the truth. That sounds about right. Yeah. Mm. So we're back into the victim and we, we're projecting, you know, the body is literally telling us what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. yep. So I've had problems with underactive thyroid and I absolutely know it's, it's um, I haven't had that many problems with it actually, but that's it, uh, whatever anyway. But it's, um, yeah, I absolutely know it's a belief in a lack of expression. It's a lack of, because of, of, I wasn't able to express who I was. I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, but that was the journey, you know, and knowing who I am. You know, be still and know thyself, isn't it? Be still and know that I am God. So, yeah, that sort of explains itself, really, doesn't it? So how we all feel that we've got so little time. Because we, we keep running around like headless chickens, don't we? Trying to get somewhere and achieve something. And, um, and cover over this unworthiness, this, this, you know, feeling that I've got to get something right somewhere or, yeah. Yeah. So we, what are we on? So what's the, it's nobody's fault, just what society has become. Um, and let's talk about the health and society. Yeah, the course is really big on this. And it says that um, inner peace, is health. Yep. Along with so that. that's, 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 that's mental and physical, of course, of course because yeah, everything yeah. is holistic. Um, so inner peace is, 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 the answer, is the only answer. Yeah. It's the only answer to all our problems. All our problems, because there is only one problem. The course is great on this as well. It says, you know, I could see peace. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I think it's the... Yeah whatever, the boyfriend or the <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But I'm never upset for the reason I think. And I could see peace instead of this. Because actually all my, my all my problems come from the belief that I'm missing God. Yeah. I'm missing my true self. God being me. You know, my true self. So that's that's where all our problems come from. Yeah. 
So what's the positive thinker's response to this? How does the law of attraction apply when the reality is that so often in modern society we're isolated, we are on our own? Yeah, exactly. This is why, so the Course says this, says you're, you know, you're on your own, you know nothing, basically. And nothing can replace God, it also says that. And it also says that you need your brother. You need your brother because your brother is your, is your way home. Because how can, your brother is going to bring to you all the stuff you need to flush up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know? And so be grateful to them. So be grateful when, when our buttons are pushed. This is, this is what I think the, the, the true spiritual path is. When you're grateful for the um, difficulties. Apparently there was a saint too. I don't know her name or his name. But she was, I think it was a she. <laughs> she would pray for difficulties. She would pray for for, for, for difficulties because she knew that that's, that's how she would get back to God. Which, which again I, is, is a paradox and, and a sign of the times that we're so used to or, or wanting things to be easy and told that they can be easy and we can have what we want. But to actually welcome difficulty is, is very much going against the, the, the flow of the time, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. It's radical, isn't it? And doesn't mean to say that our lives have to be difficult. Somebody said to me a little while ago, you don't have to have such difficult lessons, Michelle, <laughs> you know, because I've had a few. Um, but hey-ho, that's how it is, you know. That's what, how it is, yeah. You know, it's it's like, well, that lovely quote, you, know, you can come to God in your dancing shoes or, in a, or on a stretcher, you know. It's <laughs> because what we're actually looking at here is our resistance, isn't it? Our resistance yeah. to seeing this. And our resistance is our huge fear of this love, actually. And the huge fear of our own light. It's not that the darkness we fear, it's we fear our own yeah. light. You know, and this love that we fear, uh, we, we fear it will, it will obliterate us. And in some ways it kind of does. In some kind of ways it does, yes, absolutely, it's true. Yes. But in the, in the most beautiful way. Yeah. You know, but we think it's going to be death. So, of course, we are touching on our whole belief in death, which is integral to all of this that has to be looked at. I, I know that's a big issue for some people. That, that's, that, that one doesn't bother me, but uh, I know some people. Some people. That's brilliant. I mean, that really does, you know, so much of what you're saying. I haven't really appreciated this was, you know, what The Course in Miracles was what it's about and the different levels at which it works. But everything that you've said is, is totally resonant with... Uh, the various ideas I've picked up from all sorts of different places over the years. So, brilliant. That's very supportive. And so many things you said there are just that, that little, you know, extra, yeah, it's okay, you're on the right path, you're doing the right things sort of message, which, which is what I needed. So, That's it. Brilliant. Encouragement Thank you very much. is all yeah. we need, isn't it? And we yeah. have motivation for healing. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Oh, lovely. It's been lovely. It's been very exciting, Keith. Thank you. That's it's been brilliant. great. So, thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you.